Hello, everybody, and welcome to the. There we go. Now we're recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Roach Wiggle, March 14th, 2024. Uh, we have sunlight now. It's amazing what uh, playing with the clock can do for uh, your circadian rhythms. So, hello, Exotic Wilderness. I'm going to take a moment while we bask in the glorious sunlight first, classic first. Um, here's a... Uh... Huh. Okay. I, uh, from somebody who is uh, getting some bugs about changing the schedule on which when the services that we will be sending them through um science grimdark lemonade hello zen monkey hello uh yeah we might be in the running for uh closing the blinds for the first time for the first time in forever uh that might end up happening today the sun is slowly creeping behind the neighbor's trees though so i'm not 100 percent sure <clears throat> So hello, Joseph, and I, it was Tavir, that's, it was Tavir is how you say that, okay, I'm remembering from last time, where I keep uh, talking about how to say it, so, um, let's see, anything else going on right now, correct, all right, I'm get there we go, I'm getting there, uh, happy almost spring, everybody. We got one more week. It'll be spring. Will I be doing a live stream next week? Yes, I will. Um, we have, uh, I wonder if I'm, my Discord won't open. I was going to post, uh, I usually don't do this. Usually somebody does it for me. Uh, a link to the live stream in the Discord uh, to get more people in here because I need to make the announcement that the auction is almost certainly moving to the first weekend in april which is different than what we decided last time uh, i had a bunch of obligations that some some known some unknown we've we've we live busy lives right now is how things go and uh the first weekend is going to work out better angela will be in town to take care of me during the bugapalooza so that's what i believe we're going to end up doing uh, well, I'm almost absolutely certain we're going to move it to the first weekend in April, and that'll be that. Uh, so I need to probably tomorrow night the promotional material will go live. And why is it my Discord opening? It's thinking. Is it already? Is it like shadow open? I don't want to do my task manager and bomb the whole system here. Let's try. Let's try just ending a bunch of. Okay, one task that did it. Um, so anyways, hello, LC, Stephen, Logan, welcome everybody to today's live stream, which I, uh, I think I might wait for, I'm going to just, I'm just going to ask this. I'm going to keep asking this today. Hello, Devin. Uh, I need, I need whatever, as long as it's not outrageously priced, I need whatever the best plant, outdoor plant labeling little tag plus writing utensil system is i need i need some opinions from people who have done more of this than i have because i want to get all like i get all my stuff labeled before i move and i'm getting as i'm setting up my permaculture stuff and i'm buying like i've got a couple of starts of things coming in i need to keep everything straight moving into the future so i'm looking at a life of so I need the little plant stick in the ground things, you know, whatever they are, if they're, if they need to be metal or plastic or wood or whatever, somebody says, Oh, I've had these and I've used them for 20 years and they're great and they never fade and blah, blah, blah. I'm just looking to get five to 10 years out of a little plant tag outside in the Michigan sun, rain, snow, blah, blah, blah. So I need that combo little plant tag you stick in plus writing utensil because otherwise I'm going to mix up all my potatoes and all my onions and all my, all this stuff that, uh, that I need to know. Metal tags, dead ballpoint pen. 
is that a type of ballpoint pen, a, a dead ballpoint pen? I think we're finally going to get Discord open here. Or not. Oh, yep, there we go. Perfect. Um, and preferably something I can just go on like Amazon and buy, but that's not a billion percent necessary, I suppose. So I cut rectangles from 1 16th inch aluminum and then stamp them. No, just a pen without it. Oh, you're saying you, you etch it into the metal is what you're saying with the dead ballpoint pen. No, it's just because I thought it wasn't happening. No, we're, uh, we are, we are going here. In fact, I'm about to log on to discord and tell other people that this is happening. And I'll probably make an announcement about the auction being moved to the first weekend in April. Um, so let's see what can be done. Um, bid central. I might do it in general. I do it in general. Probably in a minute. Uh, I used to use the embossable tags that you use a pen to write on, but I had a hailstorm wipe them all out. Okay, that's that's a that's an act of God that I need to be. Uh, plan for also hi Alan also hi to anybody else who I have not directly said hi to yet. Uh, Sharpie is really only good for three to five years at least in my climate. So um, metal tags, dead ballpoint pen, okay, or Sharpie not even good for one year in Arizona. Yeah, so um, it seems like uh, etching is probably the way to go or something like that. And by stamping, is can you like? Is there like a customizable stamp? You know, I'm I'm fine with doing a ID system with like a ledger and a number that associates to things. Um, exotic wilderness asking if I have hemiblabra granulata. Yes, yes, I do. I've had them since August. I actually don't think I've gotten any babies just yet out of them, but any day now, I'm sure. Um, there will be some Noctocola up at the auction. I'm going to try and get everything. Um, stamps are like the rabbit ear tattoo kits. Do I look up? What do I look up on Amazon? I'm a millennial. Do I look up plant, label, stamp? Um, aluminum plant label, tree tags, garden label, tag, outdoor metal. Um, banner, copper metal, plate labels, 50 pack. Um, but those copper will, copper will oxidize. See, these aluminum tags are nice. I'm kind of hoping for the display, kind of like they're showing on this thing. 200 aluminum plant tags with, with 200 metal wires, double-sided, right on metal, blah, blah, blah. Does it, does it come with an easy way to stamp them? You know, I, uh. What, how do I do? I'm, I'm a fish out of water here. Harbor Freight, Alphabet Stamps, Pittsburgh used to be their cheap brands names now. This is the metal stamps. Maybe, I, maybe I'll look up metal stamp. Metal stamp. Metal stamping kit. Ooh. Professional 36 pieces metal stamp kit. Six millimeter steel number and letter punch set. Yeah, I mean, I can I can get away with just I can get away with no, I can't get away with just numbers. I'd like to have the names of stuff on things for teaching future children and wife to know what to do, what what things are without having to. Okay, so so okay, so you take you take your little stamp thing and you position it quarter inch and you you pound it in steel bench block you just take a hammer and you smash it i like that true stamps get smacked by hammer but work really good one letter at a time i don't actually mind i don't actually mind that now i guess the next thing i ask all the professionals who are here is uh are, is there is there any pro to this i'm seeing aluminum and copper 
as my op options here. Oh, this is like a, you can spell a whole word and then stamp it in. But honestly, one of the onesie twosie isn't the isn't the worst thing. I'm actually pretty okay with that, and that seems very permanent. Uh, I feel like uh, thanks for some pictures of what I use. Thank you, Devin. For aluminum tags, probably a heavy stitch work stick works. Okay. Um, yeah, I. Uh, yeah, how does this? How does this work? <laughs> I, again, the, my brain's trying to f cobble together and formulating the uh, the optimum here. I like the little the little things that stick up these. This says sixty pieces metal garden tags, but like, what what are they? Are they really? Are they really? Uh, okay, aluminum ten inch. That that seems pretty reasonable. Two point six inches across, six point five centimeters. We get this out. Oh yeah, yeah, that's enough space. And those things I was just looking at were quarter inch, I believe. Let's see. We're getting somewhere. This is exactly why I felt like why I felt like I should ask about this. I can word this is exactly what I want. I'll see what I have left for blank tags. I might be able to send you some of what I use. I would appreciate that, Devin, but it might not be necessary. I'm kind of okay with um, splurging on this because it's going to be a forever type deal thing. So I'm I'm simply wondering if anybody here knows more about metal working, metal stuff than I do, to say if there's an advantage to using the copper labels over the aluminum. It really feels like the aluminum, people use aluminum for all kinds of outdoor applications, light, light intensity, and it feels like that's probably what I should use here for this. Um, bamboo plant labels like I, f I feel like anything short of just uh going all in is uh is silly i feel with this because i need here's a stainless okay now here here we go here's another question for everybody what about stainless steel is that should i view that as as the be all end all should i value stainless steel over aluminum what what are the opinions here <coughs> Copper looks pretty after it turns green. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more concerned about the longevity of the material. What are you growing this spring? So I, we've opened Pandora's box. We are, um, Angela has given me the green light to move uh, some of my pots over to her place. And I, I have just big pots in the backyard of like, I just filled them with like, when I cleaned out the rabbit hutches and stuff last year, I would just fill them with with the, the straw, poop, whatever mix. And then I have some that are filled with part compost, part that, you know, whatever. Um, and I just I just kept filling pots. I mean, some of them have some stuff in them, like I'll throw mints or just buy some garden greens from the, the gardening store and toss them in there and just eat them myself and feed them to the animals here and there. Uh, so, but we're going to start migrating pots over to her place because her, she has the old deck out the back of the house is in full sun. And I want to get a start on growing some of this permaculture stuff and just other stuff too, you know? Um, so I'm moving some, I don't know, walking onions, a bun bunch of shallots and onions and other things like that, that I've, that I've picked up recently. And then uh, some you know, like sea kale, uh, some of my other plants, the apios, uh, just just stuff that needs needs an extra kick from that sunlight to get more biomass and to get a good yield this year because it's most likely next year it's going to be going in the ground and actually going to be providing a good deal of food. <clears throat> Devin says that copper will corrode more quickly than aluminum. For speed, you probably have a lot. Code the tags to a spreadsheet, make something fancier when time permits. I'm I'm actually pretty okay with leaving my leaving a stamp kit out on the kitchen table and just doing things as needed. Um, I do have some leftover, like lower quality plant tags that will just go and stuff that I'm like, oh, this is smooth ass, or I know what this is. But it's like, you know, if I got a bunch of different varieties of onions going. And maybe even stuff sharing the same pot. It's going to be like, well, what, what, what are all these? Or my violets. It's another thing. Um, I have a lot of different violets, different 
who knows how many species and mutants and stuff. And so keeping those straight when they don't have flowers for 10 months out of the year is uh, going to be important upon moving. Um, aluminum is usually a lot cheaper than copper. Stainless is harder to work and much more expensive. Um, hey, Luch, we got to we gotta do a swap. We got to send our stuff out. Uh, pref- next week might be, uh, might be ideal if you're good. To, I just need to know what you got ready for me for stuff um, when you can. Um, stainless is harder to work with and much more expensive. So I'm looking at, there's this little, there's this, uh, this little stamp kit I just found on, uh, on Amazon. Oh, I really like, I really like these ones that are like up front and center, 2.6 inches. Oh, these might be this, this is the same, same man. Okay. We close one of those. This Odin professional 36 pieces, steel metal stamp set quarter inch. Um, quarter inch, six millimeters for uppercase. Um, oh yeah, that's that's plenty. That's plenty big enough. That you can fit a whole Latin name on some of this stuff doing that actually. So, um, aluminum's cheap. Copper can be hit with sandpaper after it oxidizes to make the lettering pop. Stainless is expensive, harder to mark, but once marked, lasts closer to forever. <clears throat> See kale, don't eat kale. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I do. I do eat. I do eat kale though. Um, regardless, uh, you know, I guess this might be something where I, I'll just I can just try it. Oh, this doesn't come with the block. The block and metal kit is sold separately, which again I'm fine with. So we're not gonna do tags. Maybe when I have trees and stuff, I'll do tags, but I will be doing less big herbaceous uh, orchardy stuff and more smaller stuff you can't just buy anywhere in, in edible quantities. Devin says, I use the Odin 316 set and I've been happy with it. Um, is the th- 316 is a little smaller than the quarter inch, it's five millimeters. I kind of like that size because. This is partially for me. I mean, I would find a way to do this by myself if it was just me, but I also have to plan for um, Angela going out in the garden and getting stuff, exact stuff, and future kids, and then also for garden tours or having people over, having it visible. Um, So Braden says, my Taiwan creeping raspberry stayed green, survived the winter down to negative 10, but it was covered by snow, so I don't know the real tolerance I tried that a couple times and I never got it to stick. Uh, never worked for me here. And uh, that was even after some mild winters. Wow, it looks really nice outside. We're, it's, we're starting to get in those spring vibes for sure. Looking outside, not seeing snow. It's Things are waking up. It's been going pretty fast. But um, anyways, yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. Uh, Luce says, I do vinyl and stuff, and if ever need, like, decals and stuff as well. Thank you. I appreciate that offer, Luch. Uh I really <clears> – this is going to be important for permanence. Uh, Devin, do you know if that Odin professional set happens to uh, work on stainless steel? Do you know if that's uh, – do you know if, if that's, you know, is that – will that work, you think? for stainless steel again if aluminum will last 30 years that's fine with me works on stainless just fine okay so i guess it's up to me i do get it's only a 25 pack of stainless steel for 27 dollars oh do they have this they have black stainless steel that doesn't matter you've got to look at it closer to see the letters anyways um how's the size on this it's a 3.74 by 1.39 inch writing area. That's pretty big. That's a pretty big. And uh, you know, I I don't don't know if I'm going to have necessarily that that many things. But either way, it seems like the the play here is to get the stamping kit, and I can sit here and rack my brain on whether or not I want aluminum or stainless steel. And uh, then I'll get to pounding when it gets here and 
get my all my stuff labeled up nice and good. But I mean, I've got I want to get sweet potatoes at Angela's, some squashes. Um, you know, there's just so many options having a deck up and away from deer and full sun. It's like my dreams can come true. I do have to set up a sprinkler because Angela's uh, not. I don't want her to do a lot of. She doesn't need a lot of work. I don't want her to have a lot of work with this stuff. <clears throat> So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's where I'm, I'm at today. I've been doing yard stuff. I had a great day yesterday, got a lot of stuff done. Today's been less productive because it's been on and off raining, at least for outdoor stuff. I went, I cleaned my rodents a day ahead of time. Um, I have some obligations tomorrow. I was supposed to drop my car off, have obligations that are going to interfere with that. So I'm dropping my car off on Monday to be gone for months for, to, to come back to me at question mark time and that's gonna suck um i want to plant some cucurbita and gyrosperma says alan by morning i'll get right by svb what's svb you don't know what svb is. oh squash fine board duh. um yeah you know i found my my neighbor again joe down the street has a. Uh, had uh, a lot of trial and error experience with um, <clears throat> some stuff in his first couple of years here. He's toned some things down lately. A lot of his, a lot of the stuff that he threw him that worked is doing really well. But you, you test things and you find out what works and what doesn't work. But he found, I think it was honey, honey, honey nut, honey nut uh, squash uh, was. Uh, extremely borer resistant and deer resistant and a good yielder on less water. And so uh, I actually threw some out in the front yard and I got a good yield two years ago or last, not last summer, but the summer before that I got like three or four uh, fruits off of it without any inputs other than like a handful of compost at the base. And I was happy with that. I was very happy with that last year. It just, I think maybe I got it in late. Maybe we had a weird watering pattern, something, you know, the environment out there changes, um, changes, uh, stuff moves around, stuff changes over time. And so the uh, honey nut squash did not actually get a yield before frost out there last year, which was very tragic. Um, but again, it had good resist. It seems to have good resistance to all that kind of stuff, and so um, I'm happy to try that. <clears throat> um, hopefully, get some seeds in at Angela's, and really start uh, getting a feel for what I want to have in the final big, huge garden thing. And uh, really, really looking forward to having full sun. I cannot <laughs> emphasize it enough how much I despise being in the shade that I've been in. And uh, seeing other people put absolute minimum inputs into stuff uh, and get results just because they're in full sun and then trying my hardest here and not get much because I'm in shade. Uh, exotic Wilderness asks about how much ventilation Hemiblabra like. Uh, you can go pretty low ventilation with them or you, you can keep them pretty humid, I've, I've noticed over the years. They will take uh, quite a bit of... Humidity getting adjusted to the time change here. Uh, but anyways, I, another PSA to everybody. Uh, I'm going to say that the uh, auction has been changed to um, the first weekend in April. The April, the spring Bugga Palooza auction has officially been changed to the first weekend in April, the 5th through 7th. Promotional material will be live shortly. All right, there we go. We're going to do net everyone in Bid Central to say important. I need to go to pinned announcements and I got to unpin the old one. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, people voted on on wanting the first weekend anyway, so. Um, I got a. Uh, where did I do all these pinnings? Important announcement. The spring bug up loser auction will be the first weekend in April, the fifth through seventh. All right, there we go. Um, that's done. What day will be Roach Day? Probably Saturday. I need to look at the old schedules for stuff and see what what the layout was for things. But Roach Day will probably be Saturday. Uh, if we do the uh, snakes, it'll probably be Friday or Sunday as well. Hey, Tennyson. Good to see you. Um, see, I'm going to go ahead and buy this, uh, this stuff. Uh, buy the kit metal stamping kit i'm sure i will use this many times i'm sure it says will work for ten thousand hits or whatever i like that i like big numbers on my uh tools so uh anyways anybody anybody here grow any interesting permaculture stuff there's always uh i use mine all the time good to hear uh, I, I always, uh, there's always stuff. You see all the gardening catalogs and all the permi groups, you know, somebody will preach about something being the best thing ever or whatever. Um, or you'll get the catalogs and they'll say, this is a heavy yielder. This is a blah, blah, blah. This is an incredible new thing. And then you get it and it's like it underperforms, but then you find out about like this plant that is never talked about. Good example would be, um, was it European burnet? Let me make, let me double check that European burnet. Uh, is that it? Maybe I don't think it's great burnet. It's one of the burnets. I'm trying to think. Somebody, somebody, help me! Help me, somebody, please. Um. Canadian burn it, Italian burn it. Uh, what is the species I'm thinking of? It's used as a cover cover crop too. Um, livestock burn it. Livestock burn it plant. Sanguisorba minor maybe. Salad burn it. There we go. Sanguisorba, Sanguisorba minor. All right. This plant, hit that like button. Thank you, Zero Cool Ninja. I appreciate that. Um, Brain has some nearly spineless opuntia with minimal glockids, but they can't survive below about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, yeah, that's great in milder climates, but I need I need Michigan working -y stuff. Um, and, again, I will, I'll take this opportunity to talk about salad burn it, Sanguisorba minor. Bought it on a whim at uh, there was a just a regular garden place here that had it available, and uh, you know three four dollars for a starter plant. Just thought, okay, we'll try this. It smells good. It tastes pretty good, and in full sun and even in super dry conditions, this plant is a phenomenal performer. I don't know how it's not recommended more for permaculture. It's just a great plant. Uh, perennial tastes good. Um, low water needs, it's, it's just a great thing, but there's hardly any information about it. And I know there's dozens of other, probably hundreds of other vegetables and stuff that are like that. So I can't help with cold climate stuff. Mine is all Arizona desert stuff. I mean, you can help with it if you're growing anything for vegetables, you know, permaculture type stuff, not native stuff, which obviously I do love, but I am, I'm looking for, I got to Got to feed the human colony is the goal with this kind of thing. Um, with that being said, and before I compliment Tennyson, um, if anybody knows a good, good yielding white fleshed potato variety with um, with good disease resistance, my primary interest is disease resistance. Uh, let me know. 
that's uh i do i do rather love potatoes and i would like uh i would like to get start looking for a potato to start mass cropping so Menarda Menarda was surprisingly tastier than I anticipated, <clears throat> says Alan. And Tennyson, I will give public congratulations being on uh, a third generation of Hemithir Sasra Vitata now. Uh, I think that means you've cleared the you've cleared the skill gap. You got you got it figured out. Uh, and that's that's good. And you if you keep doing exactly what you're doing, you should not have any problems moving into the future with them. Um, and I'm curious if you're cutting corners on anything, because as far as I know, all the people who cut corners on stuff did not have, uh, have not had continuous success. Um, Alan talking about Menarda, the lady plum Menarda is like the most delicious aromatic plant I think I've ever experienced. It's, it's got such a sweet, fruity, minty smell to it. I love it. And I, keep saying I'm going to split mine and mass produce the plant, but I never do it, but it will have the very front and center place in the herb garden because it's just a phenomenal plant. So, but yeah, potato varieties. Uh, is it official that you're moving into Angel? Or do you guys plan to get a new house in the future? Says exotic wilderness. It is kind of unofficially official. There are still some things we need to tend to some things we need to plan out and work out, but it's really looking like it's the leading op option, and it's um, it's it's tangible enough that we're talking more about it as the the final perfect, the be all end all option. There are still some things that could get in the way. There's still a lot of logistics that we need to work out, um, but it's it's a, it's officially unofficial, unofficially official. Um, Alan asking when the wedding is where we've been talking about eloping where things will probably be on the smaller scale uh, but it's going to be probably be sooner than later uh, we're, we're still talking about it trying to figure stuff out for that but uh, we don't we don't necessarily want something big and we've had we have several friends uh, in our both of our lives who have had larger weddings or who have had more of a formal planned you know, bigger, not traditional, but, you know, like traditional within the last 50 years wedding and they're just miserable. Like they just keep speaking so poorly of it. Like, I wish we did this. I don't know why we did this. If I could do it all over again, I'd do this other thing. Like they feel like they're so entrenched in things now that they can't like back out of it and have like a smaller ceremony or something. Um, so... I, I've always felt like that was the best thing, very focused on the us uh, thing. Alan will bring a bag of roaches to release to the wedding. Um, depends on what roaches you're going to be releasing there, Alan. Uh, as Xavier Willis says, if you do move into Angels, you would no joke be 10 minutes away from me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, again, we got, we got a lot to talk about, a lot to think about, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's, uh, it's there's there's some traction there. I feel like by by July August, there's things are gonna be a lot more definite. So they're still up in the air right now. We still have some things we need to take care of and talk about, um, and all this other stuff. But um, it's there's some momentum here enough that I'm kind of I'm getting antsy and I'm looking into doing things as extreme as moving all of my my pots over to her place so um so yeah uh i also i i all the fencing that nazi destroyed pretty much all of it uh i have gutted with uh angela and my dad's help that's what we did yesterday i've set up a bunch of breeding pens for like letting chickens and stuff set their own eggs i uh i don't want to incubate much this year on my own i want things to take care of it themselves uh so i've got some pens and some enclosures and stuff coming in this weekend i'm gonna have to set up and again i anybody here who's looking to fence stuff off in the future on your property if you want to keep things in keep things out do not screw around sink the money into the heavy duty t-posts 
and the and cattle panels from Tractor Supply for the cost of of the supplies and the it's so easy to install them. I was doing it with both my my dad and Angel yesterday installing the stuff, um, but then I went I went it alone today and I was able to put up I don't know maybe like a hundred feet of fencing in like two hours solo and good quality, not going to flop out of the ground and, and stay put stuff. Um, it was ridiculously easy. And I can't believe that I never did this before. <laughs> I really can't believe that I had put off. Um, I mean, part of it was, you know, a couple of like five, six years ago, I, I was not very financially well off. Um, that's, that's an overstatement. I, I did not have almost any money at all at that time. Um, so I had to cut corners and places, but the second that I had the money to spend on things, I really should have gone straight into this because now everything's all sectioned off and the dogs are really respecting it. And it's just so great. Um, how, how old you are, if you, my dad's wondering how old you are, if you publicize that I am 31 going on 32. I don't like saying that out loud. <laughs> Uh, it's weird to say. I was okay with being 30, but now you start adding numbers after the three and it gets a little intimidating. But um, in in generally good health, I will be in much better health when, once I move and I can follow my abundance of energy into my passions uh, even more thoroughly than I can currently. So anyways, um, so yeah, I was able to put all that stuff up by myself. How's your kneecap? My knees are actually great. I, uh, I'm, I'm constantly flexing them and moving and all this stuff and i uh i actually have i don't know it's hyper flexibility in my knees so i can actually sit down between my legs for like hours and not feel any pain it's not uncomfortable for me it's actually very comfortable for me to sit like that um and i pretty sure most people can't do that like they usually recommend that as like a stretch for people and i just do it naturally and it's very easy my dad says give it a decade um, yeah, I'm, I'm in, a decade is all the time I need to get all the infrastructure set up for everything I want to do. So I'm fine with 10 years. If it all hits me in 10 years, that's okay. The Armenian squat, um, maybe, I, maybe, or maybe I won't publicize that uh, terminology for that uh, ability. Maybe, maybe not. So, but anyways, the fences are up. The dogs are excluded from my precious spring ephemeral bed. Like everything is poking out of the ground right now. And I just watching the dogs, watching Nazi run through it at full speed, the gigantic like five foot deep hole she dug in there. Um, I still have to pile a lot of the sand back in. I'm, I'm going to backfill it with all kinds of stuff and just uh, probably put some Rebecca triloba. There's seedlings all over, like, like first year rosettes all over my yard. I'm probably going to fill the hole, uh, grab, I don't know, 10 of those rosettes, bury them into the sand there, just kind of carelessly watered here and there and just sort of, you know, it's it's the habitat underwent some disturbance and that's not a bad thing. Um, it is it's the spring, the sensitive spring ephemerals probably were not the, the biggest fans of it, but they will survive. So um, lots of eggs in the spring auction. I don't know exactly why, but I've barely been getting any eggs yet from the birds this year. Um, I have reduced my feeding schedule. I have been feeding less, but I don't feel significantly less to not have any ducks laying. I usually have duck eggs by now, although it's possible maybe the ducks are laying them somewhere I'm not paying attention to in the run. Um, I'll actually have to I should go look around for that uh, tomorrow, see if they've made a secret nest somewhere. Uh, the run's like... <sighs> the run's like 100 feet by 20 feet, 30 feet, so it's pretty big, plus the attached barn slash coop. So, um, any plants up for auction? I might, I might put some plants up at the spring auction. I'm not sure what... Maybe some of my violet varieties. Uh, Angel's got a really weird one on the property. I've never seen a violet like this. I'm always checking violets. So there's, it's. I don't know if it's even Sororia. It might be. I mean, it's almost impossible to pull apart a bunch of different 
tell apart a bunch of the different violets. But um, so you see people on eBay selling their violets, and they're usually they're you know bicolor violets, and they've got the whiter outer petals and the pur purpler inner petals, and sometimes the purple bleeds out more of the center, so it's more veiny looking. Sometimes it's a good condensed splotch in the center, like a lot of people have in their lawns. But at Angela's place, I found violets that completely white flower and then they have just a little just a little eye of purple in the center and i've never ever seen that before ever um in all in all 10 years that i've been eyeballing violets i've never seen that before so maybe i'd put something like that up for auction i have like the solid magentas the bicolor magentas i got all kinds of stuff i got native michigan 100% confirmed native Michigan wild type uh, white yarrow, which is very difficult to find. I might put some some pullings up of that. Um, not necessarily important that it's Michigan genotype, more that it's confirmed native United States genotype, which is cool because uh, the, the uh, North American and the Eurasian populations of them hybridize very readily. Devin says, my ducks like to do... Uh, the secret nest thing to me, uh, yeah. They they might have they might be forming a pile somewhere. I really should check for that. And I mean, a lot of my a lot of my rowan ducks are getting older, and I I really need to get another generation out of those. So they'll probably go into one of the the breeding chamber things to get. Uh, they usually go broody pretty readily, so I'll do that to get another generation from them. Uh, but I finally got East Indies again after the Coyotes got all of mine three, four years ago. I think it was winter of 2021, I think, uh, when the Coyotes got a lot of my uh, – they got all my East Indies. So I got some again last year, including blue East Indies. And these these are these were not hybrid. They're not hybrids. They weren't um, outbred. This These are like – this is a sport that happened in just pure uh, – black in pure east indies so um uh yeah so i'm i'm gonna pull i don't know if the the east indies ducks will like nest nest in a smaller space together but i'll probably pull a pair <clears throat> or i don't know exactly what i'm gonna do usually i fenced off a pair and the the hen duck has uh built a nest and incubated so uh, Tennyson asking if I'm still looking for Utah or in Vega. We're collecting all over southern Utah this year, and I'll fist a few burrows for you. Yes, of course, I'm always looking for new air in Vega, especially from Utah. That will be a high priority place for me. Um, yes, fisting versus frosting doesn't make it any better, I, I suppose. So, anybody else got anything new come up in the last uh, in the last week? Uh, I have I have something that I don't necessarily want to talk about that's pertinent to somebody who frequents the chat. I'll I'm going to keep my my mouth shut on that though. But uh, was it had a it had a bit of a saddening. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, the spider boss asked, "Hello, I saw that you have giant African millipedes for sale on your website. I was wondering how big they are. They're like a decent sized specimen. I currently don't have any for sale." Uh, and when they do go up for sale, they're anywhere from half an inch to one inch. It you almost it is almost certain that you will not see any bigger gigas available at Roach Crossing than half inch to an inch for at least a decade. I if I want to scale up to make larger captive bred specimens available, I'm going to need a lot more space, and I'm not there yet. But um, again, they will be tiny. If you want confirmed captive bred individuals, they're most likely going to be smaller or you're going to pay a lot for them. Uh, Exotic Willie really says, I'm receiving some unidentified grain weevils arriving tomorrow to get a, hoping to get a culture going. I hope you do. And I can send them off to our, um, our grain pest identification expert master person. Elsie says, I converted someone to loving roaches today. All I had to do was give him a cup of adult panclora. Well, that's that's an easy way to get somebody to fall in love with them or to start disliking panclora, considering uh, how fly some of them can be. Uh, but a lot of people are amused the first time they see a bright green cockroach. Uh, they're amused pretty much the first time they see anything that doesn't look like a household pest cockroach, in my experience. 
Ellen says, I need to figure out when to ship the umasosome after my flu goes away. Oh, yeah, that's right. You found some good stuff in Texas, Alan, which I am looking forward to. Um, but, yeah, I'm really in plant gear right now for, for stuff. I, I'm, I'm riding this wave. This uh, Despite the fact that I've been doing work, I still kind of view these these yesterday and the next couple of days as sort of a staycation um, because I'm not doing strictly bug work type stuff. I get to follow my whimsies a bit more. Which I kind of have to to get the yard and stuff in uh, in order. Uh, speaking of whimsies, I did finally find a seller with the yellow uh, apricot comet slash. Uh, it's the opposite of comet goldfish. Sar not sarasas. Um, I found s somebody selling them, and I bought as many as I could. And I'm just gonna wait and see if I actually receive them at all. And hope that I do. Uh, as, as hopefully, I don't get a refund a month from now and then saying, sorry, we don't have them. But I figured while they were on the table, I, I should get them because I'm complaining about wanting them for several years now. So, um, yeah, it's been, been quite a week for stuff. Again, the permaculture order that my neighbor and I did, that's going to be coming in eventually. Um just really excited for this growing season, even though I'm not going to be doing a lot of stuff here. It's going to be, I feel like um, the progress is happening. Exactly. Well, it says, it would be important to keep the locality information for you, Kyle. If I do get them going, I always get back to you for the entomologist, get their ID. Um, it's, I think with grain pests, it's helpful to know where they came from. Uh, there might be some, some government industries, if you, industries, sorry government entities might be interested to know if something uh, has been brought in that has not been circulating around um they they might they would probably appreciate the information there was a, was the cafra beetle a couple years back they were concerned was getting into the u.s in good numbers tennyson asks how do you go about isolating his traits have a group isolated, but also isolate a super straight masola pair. Would the pair work possibly better for artificial selection? Uh, for any bugs, uh, mostly for roaches, I pull stuff when they're nymphs, and then I will rear them up separately, and then I will put the adults that I like the most together and do the selection that way. Um, you can you can pull individuals and put a pair that you pulled out of a colony together, but you have no guarantee that the male is going to mate the female and that she's not already mated with another male. So I've always found that to be less consistent than boys live in one container, girls live in the other container, and when you get uh, most of them to adulthood, you pick your favorites, you uh, you put them together, and then you you keep doing that. Um, you know, I'll leave the nymphs. I'll leave the nymphs together in those setups for until they're like fifth or sixth in star. You know, they start gaining some size, and then I start pulling them. Uh, and that's that's worked very well for me. It's, uh, evidence of that being uh, taking Dan's LLE mahoganies to the next levels. I did that a lot, and have gotten some very good consistency. Um, uh, tennis and talking about fish being fun. I do enjoy my do enjoy fish. I will have some more fish related stuff eventually. Um, Elsie is uh, going. Good to see you, Elsie. Hope you have a good evening. His eye willingness is floundering about what size you should keep the granulata in. Eight small nymphs. I think you could keep those in one of these deli cups until they get like to adulthood basically because granulata is the smallest of the three hemiblabra in culture in the u.s currently so adult males are like maybe an inch long yeah it's about i'm looking at the, the ruler about an inch long um and adult females just a bit bigger than that so you could keep them in a very small enclosure they'll grow faster they should be a bit healthier that way <laughs> And then once you start seeing some adults move them to a larger enclosure, um, that would be my recommendation for hemiblabra granulata. Um, trying to think, uh, we have uh, we 
did I talk about this last week? Had they come in yet, or maybe they hadn't come in yet? Uh, in this, a new Ishnoptera or CF Ishnoptera, the, the Uth matches. Um, it is an interesting case of a legal import of a uh, out of the country species of cockroach. Uh, the what happened was the specimen, a specimen of this uh, roach was it legally legally brought into the United States, pinned and everything, but she had an ooth attached to her in that past inspection, what have you. And that ooth ended up hatching, and so now we have an Ishnoptera species, quite a, a quite large one, it looks like, uh, that has been brought in. I received ten nymphs; they're about fourth, fifth in star. So hopefully, within two to five months, I'll have a bunch of them, and they will uh, they'll find their way into other people's hands, and that'll be that. And it'll be nifty and cool, is what that'll be. So, um, so yeah, it's an interesting thing to share. I, I, I think. Uh, what else is going on around here? What are some other things I can bring up to, to everybody, or things other pe other people can bring up about their projects? I always love to hear what other people are working on. Um, any updates on CF Virginica? Uh, no, nobody's died, Alan, but nobody's matured yet either. Uh, I think that that's on the horizon. They all look plump and happy, so I'm not concerned. Uh, again, they look fine. Um, for the deli cup with side ventilation, I just poking holes in the lid. Uh, pulling a couple holes in the lid should be fine. Just um, just don't. If you're really paranoid about them like suffocating or something, don't stack other containers on top. But side holes are fine too. You know, I'd poke maybe like, depending on how dry your house and stuff is, I'd poke maybe three to seven, of uh, three to seven, uh, three to three to four millimeter holes. So three to seven individual, three to four millimeter holes in that size deli cup, and that should be fine. Um, interesting. There's a lot of discussion of hemiblabora today. They've been texting somebody back and forth on. Uh, care for CF Rose and I. So, but really, Hemiblabra is an excellent roach. If you, you you just set them up on some 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 woody substrate, you know, coconut fiber is fine too. Um, it's just really easy. Just a really easy genus. It's great. We really need the Puerto Rican. Uh, was a Brunner eye. There might be another species there too. Uh, we really need those guys. I mean, we have. I should be thankful. Thankful um, for the tenebricosa that we have, which are doing phenomenal. However, the flip side to that is I fear that with, uh, with CF Rose and I not having been, um, it's not really been fully publicized yet that it's a different species than true tenebricosa. Uh, I feel some hybridization or stock mixing up is inevitable. So, um, Exactly, Willis. I didn't know you were going to Puerto Rico. You, uh, you, you, you could and you should look for roaches while you're there because Brunner Eye would be an incredible find. And I need to get to Puerto Rico one of these days too. Well, I got enough on my plate right now. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I'm in, a, I'm in an outdoor work mindset. I've got some obligations uh, tomorrow to take care of uh, some bug drop off. Uh, a, a nice uh, breakfast. Uh, I don't know if he if he actually ever attends the live stream, but with a uh, with a customer of mine who's been a customer of mine customer of mine since uh, since he was quite young, so that's going to be interesting. Um, Simplo key was pretty common there at certain locations, yeah. Uh, and there's there's a whole treasure trove of Uricotus in Puerto Rico too. Uh, locality Dikipians would be a uh, just a mouth-watering prospect for me, but that might, they might be for all I know up in the cloud forest or something. So, um, any other, any, anything else from anybody? I, I feel like a lot more stuff happened this week, but I just don't have too much that I necessarily, necessarily want to talk about. I got that box with the Schnoptera. It also had uh, Dermestes caninus and then 
I can't remember if I talked about this last Thursday. Maybe it came in last Thursday. Um, and then the smooth spider beetles. Uh, yes, I did. I did talk about this last week because I remember going off on how I d- disliked the Latin name for its weird combination of vowels. So I'll stop talking about this now um, and try to think of something else to talk about as I look around me um, and don't necessarily see too much. Uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's been pretty status quo around here. I got all my uh, basement roach husbandry done in like a 10 hour span between two days. And so that's great. I'm really on top of things. Um, uh, Xavier Williams says, I found some type of meal moth in the cytophilus culture from you. Well, that does not bode well for me because um, I don't necessarily want those competing with cytophilus. So now it sounds like I need to, uh, I need to go and do a complete revamp of that enclosure. But you know the cytophilus might outcompete the me the the uh, what is what's that genus that the meal moths are in? I can't remember what it is. Plodia. They might might outcompete them, or they might have some sort of crazy synergy where the cytophilus being more likely to break open the kernels of the rice and stuff and really churn up things uh, creates the perfect waste for the meal moths to really feed on. So that could happen too. I'm curious about that, but I should probably move some ZMAs to a different container. Um, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think it's a huge deal. Again, I haven't actually noticed any meal moths in there, so that intrusion must have been pretty recent. Stephen Logan asks, if one were to use glass aquariums like across the board, what size would you recommend for all-around use roaches, isopods? I get a lot of mileage out of 10 gallons for roaches, and I've been using five and a half for for some special isopods, and that's been working great. I do use five and a half for some roaches. <laughs> um, it's a it's a it's a it's a good size for um, a good size colony of stuff like Ishnoptera and some Panclora. And some smaller Eurycotus, and I think I started some Blabberus and some five and a halfs. So, um, so yeah, I would I would recommend it for those things. Um, yeah, that's my general recommendations. I kind of go back and forth with five and a half versus um, the extra large Fonariums because I do get better control over containment of things escaping the bins and entering them with the muslin cloths it's more absolute um, because there's they're, they're permeable but there's no way that stuff can can squirm in there or, or really or fall in there like with the um, with the, uh, the sort of what's that stuff called that poly something cloth that I use for the 10 gallons. Uh, which doesn't keep out like fruit flies and stuff like that. But um, again, I, I kind of go back and forth on it, just figuring it out, you know. Any updates on that dog vomit slime mold? I did find some patches of the um, of the resting form, and uh, you know, probably put that, probably put some of those up for auction. That might be a remind me during the late night section uh thing that might be on that list again i gotta go through and just look at everything and, and figure out what's going to be up for grabs because again this is a big bug of palooza so it's on everything it's a, everything that i can possibly scrounge up and manage here with with suggestions being on the table too have any your urine there in the office you could show uh those are all downstairs uh on the millipede rack I think the only millipede that's in here are the glomerous pustulata, which seem to be doing very well in this new setup style that I'm trying, using uh, moss as their food. And they, as Oren had said, they like to go up underneath the moss and eat that accumulated layer of stuff. Uh, so, I mean, it's not like it's not like they're eating live moss. They're eating like the layers of pseudo vascular tissue type stuff that's built up underneath the living moss. 
So I'm really, really looking into that, really hoping that this is going to be a key to getting some glomerous more readily available. Orin's had them going for a bit, um, never crazily, it seems. And uh, I had really good success with them once upon a time, but nothing consistent. They, I got a whole bunch of babies out of them, halfway grown, and then utter failure. So we're trying to avoid the failure is the moral here. We want to avoid the failure. Um, exotic Willingness wants me to save a sliver of slime mold. That seems very reasonable, reasonable to me. I think I can spare a sliver of that. So um, we're at the hour mark, guys. And I actually want, I have one more section of cattle panel fencing to put up. Uh, I took down, I had the welded black coated wire held in with rebar around the pond. The dogs just shredded through part of it. I mean, the, the wire was flopping all over the place. And uh, so I took all that out. I'm going to, after I get all my plants out of the inside of the pond, like the stuff I want from the edge, like the irises and the pickerel weed and anything that's growing up the slopes, like there's some American burnet from... Um, Prairie Moon Nursery that I planted in there that's alive. You know, there's a lot of little misc stuff that I want to save for future use. Um, I got to rescue all that stuff, leave all the stuff that's on the edges, all my asters, all the Rebecca that's around there. Then begins the arduous task of getting all the fish out of the pond. So I got to get my mud minnows out and put them somewhere. I don't know where because uh, I've got to take care of them, I guess, in the interim between finding somewhere semi-permanent for them again. Uh, but I got to fill the pond. The pond's four or five feet deep at its deepest. I'm going to find some material to start just filling it with. And then eventually when I get it up to about a foot from the grade, uh, then I'm going to start using uh, compost from the compost pile, filling that in over top. And it's going to be, since there's a liner there, even if part of it's been punctured, there's still a liner. So it's going to, the soil is going to remain wet. So uh, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. I'm going to plant uh, wet loving crops in there this year and whatever else seeds in can, can do that. But um, so I'm going to get a bunch of taro and uh, cannas and just, you know, seed that through there. It's going to be fenced off with cattle panels from the dogs, all, all temporary. It's all that stuff's coming with me when I move. Um, but it'll keep the dogs out and uh, kind of make the, the space look a little bit more. It'll, it'll spruce up the space, make it more appealing. And, of course, it'll be something I can eat and uh, that will look nice when, when the house gets put on the market and whatnot. So... Um, I still have a lot of work ahead of me outdoors. I haven't even cleared the front yard, but that's what I'm working on now. And I'm moving some stuff around my schedule so that if there's a better not rainy day next week, uh, a day that I would normally spend doing shipping stuff or working in the office, I may do that this weekend when the weather's worse. Uh, Devin says, are you growing Canna edulis? I bought Canna edulis and it's coming with my permaculture order in a couple of weeks along with a bunch of the onions and some other perennial vegetable type things, but they marketed it as canna edulis um, with many of these horticultural things. I don't know if it seemed like a pretty reputable source. So I don't know if it's going to be canna edulis proper, or if I'm going to get like a cultivar of indica that, you know, thrown in there, but it should be by what I was by the ad they had up, it should be canna edulis proper. However, that falls into current canna taxonomy. And so I'm excited for that. Uh, but I think that space, the edulis is going to get its own special pot or something. And the space I will fill with bulk cannas purchased off of eBay, most likely, because uh, people just south of here tend to have those in droves and for very reasonable pricing. And so that'll be a quick and easy very quick and easy thing. Um, again, we're we're kind of things are just a facade uh, this year. I, I got a, I got a lot invested in structures and materials that I can just throw up and sort of maintain order until I move. And then, of course, uh, 
to ooh and ah, whoever's going to move in here. And obviously, hopefully, will be somebody crazy who sees all the gardening stuff and is like, oh, yeah, I want to grow a garden and this. And, oh, this looks beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Um, Because they're going to, they would need a lot of work to do, turn the backyard into lawn. And uh, it would be a very, very crappy lawn. I can tell you that much with how the soil and whatnot, deep, deeper layers of soil and the amount of stuff you need to maintain that stuff. Um, Devin, do you have canna edulis? Like canna edulis proper? Again, I'm not up to date on, on canna taxonomy, but uh, I think it's no longer considered distinct from indica as far as a species level, but on a cultivar variety level, I believe it's still recognized or has some merit. Or it is a common name in reference to a particular strain of indica that, that produces heavy tuber set, which is exactly what I need because canna is actually delicious. Kyle's old homestead up for auction in the fall. Yeah, anybody want to auction on my house? <laughs> oh, that would be wouldn't that be just the funniest thing? The icing on the cake is to uh, do an auction for the property at the uh, at the uh, at the, the fall bugapalooza. I mean, it would be it would be quite a. I would have to do quite a high starting bid, but you know, I mean, if some that's somebody's cup of tea. I don't know, maybe just for a meme, I'll put it up for a starting bid and we'll we'll go from there. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah, it took me a long time to find it. Well, Devin, since you have Canna Edulis, uh, if you got any to spare, I would love to get some some starts from you when you whenever you can. Uh I'm excited if it is uh Again, I, I I did bare minimum research into the differences between these different varieties, and because it's not a mainstream crop, it's difficult to find hardcore information. Comes with all the dead bodies. There are a couple of dead chickens and ducks buried out there, so either somebody will find it or somebody's dog will find it. So, um, well, there are also there are also some. Some uh, exoskeletons of bugs in the compost. Hisser exoskeletons don't break down very quickly. Uh, neither do lubber grasshoppers. Karcheski had some, not sure how they sourced it, but they were the only one that had legitimate acara. Um, yeah, uh, Devin, shoot me a text or whatever. I would love to get a start of that from you uh, to, to act as a cornerstone for my sustainability stuff because. Other than sunchokes, and the only one that grew really well here, the, the one that did the best yields in the conditions I put it in was the local genotype uh, sunchoke from my neighbor's yard. Again, he has a wilder part of his yard that seems to have more moisture, more, you know, was left fallow and, and whatnot. It wasn't just pure sand. And we actually found a patch of sunchokes there, and they're definitely the native ecotype because they have the, the – smaller smoother tubers are not like any of the common uh domesticated varieties and that one did phenomenal in uh where i put it and um other than that the only other thing that produces heavy tubers i tried all i tried uh, aka i tried um i've tried a couple of those south american different uh, mm -hmm. root forming vegetables i tried florida betony um Potatoes don't do too well here, but cannas, huge clumps of, of rhizomes, huge, huge tubers, pretty much wherever I put them here, did phenomenal, and I love that, and I need more of that in my life. So, um, but anyways, good discussion today, everybody. Um, again, I'm going to take off and go outside and do some work in the dark with a headlight because I got to keep the dogs out of the pond area for now. Um, but I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Uh, again, the auction has been changed. The auction is the first weekend of April. The big Bugapalooza promotional material will probably be up tomorrow night. So with that being said, I hope everybody has a lovely uh, end of their week, lovely weekend. Get ready for spring. It's hitting us like a truck this year. Uh, I'll see everybody next Thursday for another Bugapalooza. And until then, may your cultures ever be bountiful. Good night, everybody, and thank you for the lovely conversation tonight.